but how to approach that in an interview that this thing will this problem teach so please listen very carefully and in the beginning the rest you can skip so problem says that uh, you are given an array of string called as tokens now that represents arithmetic expression in a reverse polish notation you will see what that means because it's not much to not go into deep into this so we have to evaluate this expression and return an integer that represents the value of the expression now the valid operators in this are plus minus multiply and divide the normal operator which we have and each operand may be an integer or another expression so it can be an integer if if i show you the input these are these other tokens it can be these or it can be these so it can be numbers in a form of a string again in a form of a string and it can be these operands operators okay great and uh, the division again now the problem the interviewer will tell you the problem and it is finished okay you have some tokens and that can have operands and integers that's it he will just tell you this it is your duty to ask him the counter questions first counter question again the problem gave you it was great but you will have to ask this to your interviewer the first question you will ask is the division between two integers is will that truncate to zero as in is it a floor division which will happen or it is a absolute division which will happen so it means it says that it's a floor division so that is one thing which you have to ask else your answer will change other thing is that is is there a possibility because he or she as an inter interviewer never spoke about what values can be as your these numbers these numbers which you have let's say three one two it can be zero also right so if i do a number any number four by zero then it is not a valid it like it will give infinity and if i do like next operation is multiply with some number so shall i go on forwarding this no or maybe yes if the interview wants if the interviewer says that yeah you can have a zero so you have to put a h case there so this also is not valid here that you will you there will not be any division by zero so make sure okay it's another edge case other is the input represents a valid arithmetic expression or not in a reverse polish notation so basically if you can see that ultimately i'll show you uh, ultimately in the reverse polish notation it represents a valid expression what if i don't put a three here and just put a multiply here so three would not be here and it would have ended as two plus one multiply so it's not a valid notation itself in the first place if something of this sort is there then maybe the interviewer might ask you to please return back some exception or something of that sort okay minus one or something which is not possible but here in this case it is saying yeah it is always always possible because the input is designed such that it is always possible so that is one thing that you have to ask is it always possible or i have to handle it as an edge case now the last is the answer of all the intermediate calculations can be represented in a 32 bit integer that's also very important why because you know that you have these operators multiply and stuff so if i keep on multiplying very big numbers i know that my my my, my token values is plus minus multiply divide or it can be these values in the range for minus 200 to 200 so i if i keep on multiplying 200 into 200 into 200 if i keep on doing that it, it is possible right 200 to 200 bracket into 200 bracket into 200 so it can become very large so that's obvious that should i handle this is it possibility so it is saying it is never a possibility so you don't have to handle this so these four things you have to have to ask in an interview that is the reason it has been asked by so many companies being a easy problem still it is asked now coming on back that how we will solve it whenever we have to solve any kind of questions we will simply go on and try to build what should be the value so we will just try to build okay let's from this tokens let's try to build the reverse polish notation or basically try to solve this notation so we will we will be at this now our main task is to actually make this so my ultimate aim right now is i can see that the first thing which is being operated is two plus one okay i am at two okay i cannot do it so i i need at least two op like two operands and one operator so i will at least go on and get one operator and because of this notation itself it shows huh, it is always valid that my two oper op operators and one operand like two operators will for sure be there before one operand 
so this will make sure this notation will make sure that and i have seen that it is always valid it is always valid okay great so i have got two i have got one then i got a plus for sure i know i i've got a plus so this is the first closed bracket which i have encountered if it's the first closed bracket then i should actually solve them solve them which means get these values which was the latest two values and then add them okay i got two i got one i added them i got a three now let's say this thing entire the entire thing is gone and instead of this i have got a three now i got in another operand as soon as you get any operand you say okay three was this value this was the calculate value which you did previously which was three itself and then you multiplied them because the oper operand right now you multiply and then you got a nine okay nine so this entire thing is again gone and instead of this you have got a nine so it it is looking kind of easy right now yeah because we are just going and looking back the last two values but what if i have more values as in this example so in this you will see that i go on go on go on go on and i can start thinking of something when i actually get an operand okay i got a division operand so i'll take these two values which was the last value because i can also see that the the division is applied on the last two values which is 13 and 5 so i'll place 13 i'll place 5 i put a operand in between and then i have got a value again it's a floor division so i'll get a 2 so these entire thing is gone i have got a 2 okay great and then i will again say okay next operand is multi is, is a plus okay if it's a plus the previous two the previous two like numbers are 4 and 2 so 4 and we also see it's a 2 so i got a 4 plus 2 is a 6 so i can easily see that one brute force way which i can think of right now is as soon as i get a operand as soon as i get a operand i will simply replace that okay operand needs two previous operators so operand needs two previous operators i'll take two i'll take those two previous operators i'll take those two previous operators and i'll use this operand and i'll replace this entire thing by the new value and then i will again i will again put this entire thing in a new vector and then again start off with four two and the next new operand this is how brute force approach which, which comes in my mind right now is i have operand op, like operand operand operator sorry operator operator operand operand operator which means four two which is four two this is two this is plus so i have these values i get evaluated and then replace it with the actual value and then okay when i say replace i mean i will i will make a new vector or you can also use existing vector maybe new, but it seems like okay i will use a new vector so i'll make a new vector which is four um two and then plus and it can have other values also and then i'll start evaluating from the very start very beginning again so you can see it it is by default it will take o of n square time but 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 um, we cannot go o of n square because we know that uh, our tokens are actually very high so we can do it in o of n or o of n log n so very obvious one thing which comes in our mind is that um, we don't need to replace it we can just because we saw one thing that if we are evaluating these and it it became a two okay we are evaluating so we just only need to remove the last two we just only need to remove the last two operators and this operand i will never even push so i could easily see that yeah that what i could do is that i got a two i got a one then i got a plus so whatsoever last two operators i got i just simply add them okay and i'll remove them okay and i should add them i should get a three so basically i need any data structure from which recent what is pushed i should be able to remove them in the least possible time what is that data structure in which you whatsoever you push in the most recent you get it in the least possible time that is a vector or a stack so in this case i can use a vector or a stack so usually like this is how a stack is built first in first out so i push in a two i push in a one i encountered a operand then i get in the latest values which is one and two again latest two values i'll get it okay i'll simply apply the operand between them i get the new value i'll push that in the stack back okay great again i've represented the stack like this because stack and vector both represents the same way and i just want to emphasize specifically on that that stacks and vector both are same although stacks are looking like this but still right now i have rep rep represented like this you will see why i'll tell you later on but remember stacks and vector both are same now uh, as soon as we get a three okay whenever you get any operator simply push okay operand get the latest two values 
Okay, I'll get 3 and 3. Multiply them. And then get a 9. Okay, push back. 9. And then ultimately everything is ended. So, the value which you have in the stack will be your final answer. And that's the answer. Let's have a quick dry run. Very quick dry run. Uh, we will have these values 10, 6. Okay. As soon as I, I just keep on pushing the operators. Okay. 10, 6, 9, 3. I'll, as soon as I got a plus. I know I have to grab the topmost two values and then apply this operand. I'll never push this operand. I'll just get the two topmost values and I'll apply the operand here. I get a value 12. I'll remove again. I'll remove those top values. I'll apply the operand. I'll get the result. I'll push that back in the stack. I get a 12. Okay. Then I get a minus 11. Simply any operator push back. Minus 11 push back. Next I got next I got a multiply which is the next operand. Okay. As soon as you got it, like get the top two values. I got the top two values multiplied them i got a minus 132 push that back in the stack okay then i got a divide okay you saw minus 132 but then i have a divide divide and again remember divide means this is the a this is the b whatsoever is the latest whatsoever is the latest was a b so and i need to do a a upon b so whatsoever is the latest is the b whatsoever is after that it's a so i will get the top two values but remember the top two values out of it the the most recent value is the b which will come in denominator so i'll do okay 6 by minus 132 which is actually 0 again it is truncating to a 0 great then uh, i have done the division i'll go on to next is multiply again grab two values i'll grab two values simply do a multiplication of them which is a 0 and i simply push that back in my stack again then i got a number 17 number is 17 okay simply push that back number is a plus get the top two values which is 17 and 0 add them which is number 17 and then push back push that back number 5 number 5 and 17 okay simple i just push back number 5 plus get the top two values and then simply 22 again it will it will always always end at just one operator because the obviously one number because the person says it's a valid notation which always give you the valid answer so now you know one thing that okay you can simply use a stack as soon as you encounter any number or you can say any operator you can simply keep on pushing back as soon as you encounter any operand then you will grab top two values from the stack apply this operand on top on top of those two numbers and then you can simply what's your value you have got push that back in the stack so that i can actually evaluate later on cool the code is as simple as that because, because see with this what will happen is every 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 value basically every index value is always operated at a max twice it either it can be pushed back to a stack or popped once so so pushed once popped once that's it every so basically i can say my time complexity o of 2 into n that's it that's a maximum complexity which i can have for the entire algorithm which we have made so if we just go and ultimately see that this is the last value remaining in our stack everything has gone we have reached the end so this is our answer itself because it's a valid notation now the code is pretty simple we know that we will go on to all the tokens which we have in the answer right now we have to check if that token is a sign basically it's an operand or not so i have a function uh, a lambda function which is which, which which will just check if my current string is either a plus or a minus or a multiply or a divide so it will just is sign is nothing but a lambda function which i have which will take if the current token is a plus minus multiply or a divide if that is the case then he we know that he has to grab top again if that is the case then he know that he has to grab top two elements but if it is not the case which means if this is case okay great if it is not the case then for sure you know that it's an operator or basically it's a number if it's a number simply push that back to a stack but remember that you will convert that because it's a string token is a string but you are you apply operations on an integer and again you remember that it will never overflow because problem say it will never overflow so you know that it will always apply to an integer so you will convert this token to an integer and then push that integer to a stack okay great but now uh, let's imagine that it's an operand so simply grab top two values and apply the operand between them so i grab the top two values which is the num2 num2 is the b num1 is the a if you remember i said a b and the, this is the operand it can be plus minus or something like that so if this is plus i'll do a a plus b if this is minus i'll do a a minus b if this is multiply i'll do a a uh, multiplied by b if this is a divide i'll do a a by b so this is nothing but my b this is nothing but my a remember this 
ऑल दो फॉर अदर्स इट विल नॉट मैटर बट फॉर रिविजन इट विल मैटर दैट हाउ एंड फ्रॉम वॉट यूर डिवाइडिंग एंड फॉर माइंस ऑल्सो इट विल मैटर बट या सो नाउ वी नो दैट वी विल डू नम्स वन माइनस नम्स टू नाउ इफ इट्स जस्ट दैट ऑलवेज रिमूव दो operators also now if i have a plus simply add them if i have a minus simply subtract them if i have a multiply simply do a multiplication if i have a, a, a divide simply divide them and that's how simply what's the value you have got push them also okay now when this is done i'll simply this is a for loop which will go on to all the tokens and i'll simply operate on all the tokens ultimately i will have just one element in the stack and that's my answer itself and that's how in o of n time and o of n space you can solve it again many people will come up and say that okay you can also solve it in o of one time but as in the beginning i told you that a stack is also a vector so if a stack is a vector and you are also given a vector so you can replace or you can use this input vector itself as a stack or to actually apply all these operations rather than using this new stack you can actually use this tokens vector itself as a stack because again i i, I told you vector and stack both are same so you can use this vector as a stack and use this for utilizing your memory and not use the space itself but you are actually using the input and modifying the input itself which is not actually preferred and again uh, i'll not recommend that but this is one option which you can actually recommend in an interview which will give you a good impression to an interview that okay you can think out of the box also cool thank you everybody we'll be back take care bye bye